A few people have reported having problems getting FireFTP installed and configured, so I thought I'd set up yet another video on how to get it installed and configured. First of all, go to Tools and Add-ons and Get Add-ons and you can if you don't happen to see it down here you can type in fire FTP and hit enter and it should show up with a search and then you can add that to Firefox install now okay and then you have to restart Firefox in order for the extension to be installed. Okay, so now we have FireFTP installed. You select it and you can go into the options interface and you can see some of the options here. So now we've managed our add ons, we can close that up. Okay, now in order to get the Flash FTP icon, you can right click on the home, go to customize, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the icon, and you can drag it and drop it wherever you want. Then you can click on that icon, and it looks like it has all my settings from my previous installation. So let's go through those settings. Let's edit the settings. Okay, in this case the account name. This is just the label, whatever is going to appear right here so in your drop down so you can select what site you're going to be work connecting to and working with. Okay, account name. That's all that is. It can be anything you like. Uh, the host in this case, it's ftp.johnmayorga.com in this case, in my case. Then there's my login ID and my login password in order to log into the FTP server. Let's move on to the connection tab. These settings are usually okay for uh, for most FTP servers. The initial directories, in other words, what is the directory that you want Fire FTP to start off in both on both sides, on your local computer as well as the remote so what you can do in order to get these set a little more easily is uh, there's these use current buttons here so like if you change this to mini site boulder full and you click on edit and you go to connection and for the local side now it's going to be use current and video clip mini site builder full so it changes to whatever you have it currently in. Edit connection. The public underscore HTML, that's typically the directory uh, that you store all your HTML files in. Okay, so if we connect using the settings that we've set. Okay, so this is the directory in which you put all of your web content, usually in directories within this directory. So that directory would be awful handy to if uh, Fire FTP would simply jump to it immediately as soon as you logged in because you don't need to go one level below that. So back to our edit connection. That's why we have on the remote side we want it to start off in public underscore HTML. Okay. Um, now in the advanced this is to allow you to configure it so that you can right click on a file and view that file in a, a web browser uh, it'll jump to a new tab and you have to let it know how it looks from the outside versus how it looks from the inside because it's seeing things from the inside it can see the public underscore HTML directory and anybody surfing the web is not going to be seeing th that but only the contents within okay so you add your public underscore HTML because that is essentially your web root 
and for your host you can just make it HTTP this is just what it tacks on to the very beginning of what your uh, of the URL that it's going to form in order to display the content in another tab so let me give an example um, if we go to the video clip mini site builder and we want to view index.html we want to right click and view on the web okay notice the components of the URL there's the HTTP colon slash slash www.johnmayorga.com right okay and that if we jump back here and look at the edit and advanced uh, you see the www.johnmayorga.com okay still with me now the next part is video clip mini site builder slash index.html now let's jump back here edit advanced and notice that there's public underscore html that's the prefix which is taken out of the url that it creates because you don't want it adding the public underscore html you see there's no public underscore html right here if you had a public underscore html here then it would very much not work so basically this setting here in the advanced this takes the pu slash public underscore html out of the url that it generates okay so these allow for not only viewing on the web but also let's say you wanted to send somebody uh, a URL you could right click on that and copy URL and set it to HTTP okay so now I have the URL of this mini site builder from the perspective of anybody that wanted to see it from the internet not FTP in but see it from the internet side okay so you can like open a new tab and right click and paste in that URL that I just created and you hit enter and guess what happens okay it's the same URL that is created when you want to view it on the web uh, also there's a tools button over here and you can go to options and you'll notice that there are the same options that you had back when you hit the options button on the add-on back when we were installed it I guess I should say uploads and downloads that should always be binary in mode never automatic never ASCII um, uh, let's see on the connections you might want to uh, keep the connection alive while idle so that you don't time out and have to reconnect uh, probably want to view hidden files and just so that when you're like deleting a directory it, if it runs into a file that's hidden uh, it won't be able to do anything with it it won't be able to completely delete it uh, whereas if you show the hidden files it'll be able to see the hidden files and delete them and because I like uh, details uh, display the number of bytes for the file sizes but I mean this is just me this is just what I how I like to have it configured again the settings are going to be very dependent on the server that you have like for instance uh, the host name and the login and the password it all depends on the server um, the passive mode is usually what you want to use um, most of the time FTP servers are on port 21 initial directories well I mean obviously that's going to be wherever you want your initial directory to be the remote directory uh, I'd suggest public underscore HTML but really it can be anything um, well and that's about it so that concludes my demonstration of the installation and configuration of Fire FTP. Thanks for watching.